Welcome to Beyond Our Focus. I'm Stefan, this is Amanda, and this is Let's Palaver about Charlie the Choo Choo by Beryl Evans. Today is April 1st, and we're going to be reading this fancy book. Mm-hmm. So like I said, Charlie the Choo Choo by Beryl Evans. <laughs> Watch me throw my phone across the screen. Okay. Page one. Bob Brooks was an engineer for the Midworld Railway Company on the St. Louis to Topeka run. Engineer Bob was the best train man the Midworld Railway Company ever had, and Charlie was the best train. Charlie was a 402 big bu- bo- wow, big boy stream <laughs> locomotive, and Engineer Bob was the only man who had ever been allowed to sit in his peak seat and pull the whistle. Everyone knew the woo <laughs> of Charlie's whistle, and whenever they heard it echoing across the flat Kansas countryside, they said, There goes Charlie and Engineer Bob, the fastest team between St. Louis and Topeka. Boys and girls ran into their yards to watch Charlie and Engineer Bob go by. Engineer Bob would smile and wave. The children would smile and wave back. Engineer Bob had a special secret. He was the only one who knew Charlie the Choo Choo was really, really alive. One day, while they were making the run between Topeka and St. Louis, Engineer Bob heard singing, very soft and low. Who is in the cab with me, Engineer Bob said, sternly. Don't worry, said a small gruff voice. It is only I. Who's I? Engineer Bob asked. He spoke in his biggest, sternest voice because he still thought someone was playing a joke on him. Charlie, said the small gruff voice. Hardy har said Engineer Bob. Trains can't talk. I may not know much, but I know that. If you're Charlie, I suppose you can blow your own whistle. Of course, said the small gruff voice, and just then the whistle made its big noise, rolling out across the Missouri Plains. woo <laughs> Goodness, said Engineer Bob. It really is you. I told you, said Charlie the Choo Choo. How come I never knew you were alive before, asked Engineer Bob. Why didn't you ever talk to me before? Then Charlie sang this song to Engineer Bob in his small, gruff voice. Don't ask me silly questions. I won't play silly games. I'm just a simple choo-choo train, and I'll always be the same. I only want to race along beneath the bright blue sky and be a happy choo-choo train until the day I die. Will you talk to me some more when we're making our run? asked Engineer Bob. I'd like that. I would too, said Charlie. I love you, Engineer Bob. I love you too, Charlie, said Engineer Bob. And then he blew the whistle himself just to show how happy he was. Woo oo! <laughs> how did I get stuck with it? thing on. It was the biggest and best Charlie had ever whistled, and everyone who heard it came out to see. Engineer Bob and Charlie spent many happy days together and talked of many things. Engineer Bob lived alone, and Charlie was the first real friend he'd had since his wife died long ago in New York. Then one day when Charlie and Engineer Bob returned to the roundhouse in St. Louis, they found a new diesel locomotive in Charlie's berth. And what a diesel locomotive it was. 5,000 horsepower. Stainless steel. Couplers? Couplers? Couplers. Couplers. Traction motors from the Utica engine? Utica? Utica. 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 Sure. <laughs> uh, works. What the heck? Traction motors and Utica engine works in Utica? Utica? Utica. Utica? What do you mean, Utica? <laughs> It could be anything. Utica. 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 New York. And sitting on top beneath the generator was three bright yellow radiator cooling fans. What is this? Engineer Bob asked in his worried voice. But Charlie only sang this song in his small and his smallest gruffled, gruffiest voice. Don't ask me silly questions. I won't play silly games. I'm just a simple choo-choo train and I'll always be the same. I only want to race along beneath the bright blue sky and be a happy choo-choo train until the day I die. Mr. Briggs, the roundhouse manager, came over. 
That is a beautiful diesel locomotive, said Engineer Bob. But you'll have to move it out of Charlie's berth, Mr. Briggs. Charlie needs a lube job this very afternoon. Charlie won't be needing any more lube jobs, Engineer Bob, said Mr. Briggs sadly. This is his replacement, a brand new Burlington Zephyr diesel loco. Once, Charlie was the best locomotive in the world, but now he is old and his boiler leaks. I am afraid the time has come for Charlie to retire. Nonsense, Engineer Bob was... Nonsense. Engineer Bob was mad. Charlie is still full of zip and zowie. I will telegraph the head office of Midworld World Midworld Railway Company. I will telegraph the president. Mr. Raymond Martin, myself, I know him because he once gave me a good service award, and afterwards Charlie and I took his little daughter for a ride. I let her pull the lanyard, and Charlie's whistle was the loudest for her. I'm sorry, Bob, said Mr. Briggs. Thought it was... Thought what? Okay, it was Mr. Martin himself who ordered the new diesel loco. It was true, and so Charlie the Choo Choo was shuttered off to a to a siding in the furthest corner of Midworld St. Louis Yard to rust in the weeds. Now the honk honk of the Burlington Zephyr was heard on the St. Louis to Topeka run, and Charlie's blew no more. A family of mice nested in the seat where Engineer Bob once sat so proudly, watching the countryside speed past. A family of swallows nested in his smokestack. Poor Charlie. Poor little Charlie. Mm. Charlie was lonely and very sad. He missed the still tracks and the bright blue skies and wide open spaces. Sometimes late at night, he thought of these things and cried dark, oily tears. They rusted his fine Strayham headlights, but he didn't care, because now the Strayham headlights was old, and it was always dark. Mr. Martin, the president of the Midworld Railway Company, wrote and offered to put Engineer Bob in the peak seat of the new Burlington Zephyr. It is a fine loco, Engineer Bob, said Mr. Martin, chock full of zip and zowie, and you should be the one to pilot it. Of all the engineers who work for Midworld, you are the best, and my daughter Susanna has never forgotten that you let her pull old Charlie's whistle. But Engineer Bob said that if he couldn't pilot Charlie, his days as a train man were done. I wouldn't understand such a fine new diesel loco, said Engineer Bob, and it wouldn't understand me. He was given a job cleaning the engines in the St. Louis yards, and Engineer Bob became Wiper Bob. Sometimes the other engineers who drove the fine new diesels would laugh at him. Look at that old fool, they said. He cannot understand that the world has moved on. It happens. It happens. The world moves on. Sometimes late at night, Engineer Bob would go to the far side of the rail yard, where Charlie the Choo Choo stood on the rusty rails of the lonely siding which had become his home. Weeds had twined in his wheels, his headlights was rusty and dark. Engineer Bob always talked to Charlie, but Charlie replied less and less. Many nights he wouldn't even talk at all. One night a terrible idea came to Engineer Bob. Uh, Charlie, are you dying? he asked, and in his smallest, gruffiest voice, Charlie replied, Don't ask me silly questions. I won't play silly games. I'm just a simple choo-choo train, and I'll always be the same. Now that I can't race along beneath the bright blue sky, I guess that I'll just sit right here until I finally die. Mr. Martin, the president of the Midworld Railway Company, came to St. Louis to check on the operation. His plan was to ride the Burlington Zephyr to Topeka, where his daughter was giving her first piano recital that very afternoon. Only the Zephyr wouldn't start. There was water in the diesel fuel, it seemed. All the other trains were out on their runs. What to do? Hmm. wonder how that water got into the into that train. I don't know how that happened. You sly dog. Uh, someone tugged Mr. Martin's arm. 
It was Wiper Bob, only he no longer looked like an engineer wiper. He had taken off his old oil-stained... Dungarees. Dungarees. Okay. His oil-stained overalls and put on a clean pair (laughs) of overalls. Mm. On his head was an old Piltic engineer cap. Charlie's right over here on the... Charlie is right over there on that siding, he said. Charlie will make the run to Topeka, Mr. Martin. Charlie will get there in in time for your daughter's piano recital. That old steamer, scoffed Mr. Briggs. Charlie would still be 50 miles out of Topeka at sundown. Charlie can do it, Engineer Bob insisted. Without a train to pull, I know he can. I have been cleaning his engine and his boiler in my spare time, you see. We'll give it a try, said Mr. Martin. I would be sorry to miss Susanna's first recital. Charlie was all ready to go. Engineer Bob had filled his tinder with fresh coal, and the firebox was so hot its sides were red. He helped Mr. Martin up into the cab and backed Charlie off the rusty, forgotten siding and on to the main track for the first time in years. Then, as he engaged forward, first, he pulled on the lanyard and Charlie gave his old, brave cry, <laughs> Looks like you didn't get them all. All over St. Louis, the children heard the cry and ran into their yards to watch the rusty old steam loco, loco pass. Look, they cried. It's Charlie. Charlie, the choo-choo is back. Hurry. They all waved as... No, all waved. And as Charlie steam, steamed out of town, gathered sp- Gathering speed, he blew his old whistle just as he had in the old days. Woohoo! <laughs> Clickety clack went Charlie's wheels. Chuffa chuffa went the smoke from Charlie's stack. Brump brump went the conveyor as it fed coal into the firebox. Talk about zip! Talk about zowie! Golly gee gosh and wowie! Charlie had never gone so fast before. The countryside went whizzing by in a blur. They passed the cars on the Route 41 as if they were standing still. Hop to doodle, cried Mr. Martin, waving his hat in the air. This is some locomotive, Bob. I don't know why we ever retired it. How do you keep the coal conveyor loaded at that speed? Engineer Bob only smiled because he knew Charlie was speeding himself. And beneath the clickety-clack and the chuffa-chuffa and the brump-rump, he heard Charlie singing his old song in his low, gruff voice. Don't ask me silly questions. I won't play silly games. I'm just a simple choo-choo train, and I'll always be the same. I only want to race along beneath the bright blue sky and be a happy choo-choo train until the day I die. Charlie got Mr. Martin to his daughter's piano recital on time, of course, and Susanna was just tickled pink to see her old friend Charlie again, of course. And they all went back to St. Louis together with Susanna yanking... Okay. It says what you think Okay, Susanna yanking hell out of the train whistle the whole way. Okay. Mr. Martin got Charlie and Engineer Bob a gig pulling kids around the brand new Midworld Amusement Park and Fun Fair in California, and you will find them there to this day, pulling laughing children hither and thither in that world of lights and music and good, wholesome fun. Engineer Bob's hair is white, and Charlie doesn't talk as much as he once did, but both of them still have plenty of zip and zowie. And every now and then, the children hear Charlie singing his old song in his soft, gruffed voice. The end. What a a nice little story. What a a pleasant little story. I didn't mean to start laughing when I talked about Engineer Bob's wife dying, but I was just thinking that this was a children's book, and I was just like, yeah. Yeah, it touches on a few things, like, yeah. No, you mean Charlie the Choo Choo dying yeah. all the time? And I'm always dying. And I'll always do the same until I die. Yes, you should definitely Or I'll the- slowly sit here and die. Pretty much. 
you should definitely check out this book, especially the illustrations. We, we, we wish we had it here so that we could have showed you the pictures as we read it. But, but we can't seem to prepare for anything. No, we can't prepare for anything. Plus, you know, the whole like, ah, flag this, flag that, remove everything. It's not like we're really that popular, but you know there's going to be somebody. There's going to be one troll. Why don't you people ideas? Why would you even throw that out there? Why would you do that? Do you really think they made it to the end of this even <sighs> though it was only this much? <laughs> it's a short little one. As if we didn't show any pictures. We might. No, I might do something. I might throw something up here. Maybe. I don't know. Either way. Well, hope you enjoyed. As always, you can reach me at Stars Untraveled. Reach Amanda at KZ Pup. Reach the show at Beyond Our Focus on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and podcast services around the globe. Maybe. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the this particular book. I liked it. It was something different. It was nice. Um... Throw a like on the video. We'd appreciate that. And always, always, always subscribe to the channel. Because that would be wonderful. Unless you're on podcast services. Then leave the podcast service. Go to YouTube. Subscribe to the channel there. Because that would still be very appreciated. Don't leave the podcast service. Just kind of minimize it for a minute and hop on over. Leave it. Close it completely. The end of this isn't important. You go to YouTube, reopen it, and go there. Well, by telling them to leave the podcast service, they may actually quit the podcast service, and then they won't listen to us Then they will only go to YouTube. It's better, okay? It's better. How dare you. See our beautiful faces. Listen to him. Don't listen to him. Anyways, anything else? No. (laughs) All right. Till next time, long days and pleasant nights.